Hey everyone and welcome back to Roadside Coder and welcome to the last video of our Mern Stack tutorial series. And in today's video, we are going to deploy our full stack Mern application to Heroku. Yes, we are going to deploy our Node Zipper application to Heroku. So without any further ado, let's get started. So here's our project folder opened in VS Code and let's quickly go to the terminal and run it. So npm run dev and let's see if everything is working fine or not. So here's our Mern stack application up and running. Here's the profile route that we made in the previous video and all of our nodes functionality is working absolutely fine. So if you haven't been following this series up until this point, you just need to go to youtube.com slash roadside coder and just click on the playlist tabs. A click on this playlist and you're gonna find whole of this playlist over here. So let's go on and deploy this app. So let's start with the preparations of the deployment. So what we are going to do is we're gonna go to the backend folder and into the server.js file. And over here, we're gonna write some commands. So let me remove this command. We're not going to use this. And right below our routes, let's start writing the code for our deployment. So let me just write it like this. So deployment, it, this is just optional. I'm just adding the comment for my own good. So just like that. And first of all, we're gonna write a variable called dir name, and it's going to contain the path to the current directory. So path dot resolve. And also this path is going to be imported from path, in, sorry, const path equals require path. So it's just a node, a node.js module. So now this should work fine. Yep, it's working fine. So now we're going to check if our app is in production mode. So process.env dot node env. So if you remember, we have declared this node env in our dot env file. So currently isn't it's in development mode. Let me change it to production mode. So we're going to check if this is production. Then we're going to do something else. Else let's just add this route because we don't want this route to be in our production mode because we just created this route for testing. So if our app is in production, what we are going to do is app dot use and we're going to use a static folder from our front end. So if you go to our front end, you're going to see there's no uh, build folder over here, but we have to create it. So how do we create that build folder? Let me open a new terminal and go to CD front end and just write NPM run build. So what this will do is it's going to build our application and package everything in, in form of HTML, CSS and JavaScript format, which we will be able to run in our browser. So that will be the static folder that we are going to use. So over here, so while this is being built, I'm going to write app dot use express dot static. And inside of it, we're going to write path dot join. And this path dot join module is going to join the current path to the path of that build folder. So what are we going to write? So current path is dir name and we're going to go to front end folder. So from over here, we're going to go to this front end folder front end slash build and slash over here as well. So just like that. Also below this, we're going to add app dot get. So this will check all of the routes other than our routes. That mean these routes. So this will contain all of the routes other than these routes. And it's going to perform some actions. So it's going to take a request comma response. Also, you can see our build has successfully been completed over here and you can see the build folder has been created and I'll show you how we're going to use that in just a minute. Let me write this out and inside of this, we're going to write response dot send file and inside of this path dot resolve and we're going to provide it the file that we are going to use from inside of this build folder. So from current folder, dir name to front end, whoops front end and then build 
and inside of the build folder we're going to use a file called index.html so if you go inside of the build folder we have index.html as our main file so index.html let's save this and try to run this now what's going to happen is now whenever we run our backend so this backend is going to serve our front end on localhost 5000 let me show you that so let's kill the server that's already running and let's go to our package.json file and you can see we have a start script for our backend so i'm going to write npm start so here it is it's running let's go to the browser and let's check localhost 5000 and you can see our app is running over here so this is currently not logged in yep now we can go ahead and log in there we go our app is successfully running so this is how we are going to deploy it on our heroku server okay let's go on and do that so first thing first we need to create a account on heroku so search heroku and go to heroku.com and let i already have an account so i'm going to go and log in on that real quick there we go uh, we have successfully logged in so you can see i have few of the application that i've already hosted on Heroku, we're going to create our new application. So first of all, what do we need to do is we need to install something called Heroku client. So Heroku client. So the Heroku CLI. So from over here, if you are on Mac OS, you can use this command and you can use homebrew to install it on your Mac OS. But if you are in windows like me, you can use this 64 bit installer or 30 bit, 32 bit installer according to your windows. So if you're going to click on over here, as you can see it's already started downloading. So I'm going to cancel it because I already have it installed. So let's go back to our VS code. Also after installing it, I would recommend just restarting your VS code real quick. So that changes take effect. And now I'm going to kill this server and just quickly go on and write Heroku, Heroku login. I'm going to log in into my Heroku CLI. Now it's asking me press any key to open up the browser. So I'm going to press any key and it's going to take me to the browser to log in. So it has taken me to the browser and as soon as I click login, it's going to ask me email or password. But since I'm already logged in, so it's, it can, it's going to say that you can close this page and return to your CLI. So let's go back and you can see I have logged in successfully. So let's create our project now. So Heroku create and let's name our project. Let's name note zipper merd. Press enter. And there we go. It has created our app and this is the url that it has given to us so let's go on this url and see what do we get so it says heroku welcome to your new app and you can see currently this app is not running because we need to do some additional things we haven't pushed our app to heroku's repository so let's go on and do that but before that we need to create a proc file which is taken by heroku to identify our server file so let's go over here and create proc file and you can see it has turned this icon into the Heroku icon. So it's just simple file. We're just going to write web and node and the path to your server. So my server is in backend. So backend, oops, backend slash server.js. And just quickly save this file and close it. Now, since we have already built our folder, now there's two ways that we can approach this. One of the ways is we don't build our folder over here and we have a command over here to do that. So let me just quickly show you what command I'm talking about. So this is that command Heroku post build. But what happens is in uh, I've seen in most of the cases this command fails due to some error or something. So what's going on in this command is it's after deploying our application, it's installing all of the dependencies in our front end and then it's building our application in our front end. So it's creating the build folder in runtime. So you know what, let's go on and try to do this method first. If this method fails, I'm going to tell you another method. The another method is simple is just you, you just keep build your folder every time and just push it to Heroku's repository. And it's going to just take it just like that. So let's go and uh, let's go on and try this Heroku post build first. So now I need to push this to Heroku's repository. But first, let me just add in our git dot git ignore, we're gonna add slash front end slash build folder so that it ignores the build folder 
and it doesn't pushes it to our repository. So I'm going to go back to my Heroku and if you go on and refresh this, you're going to see that your app is listed over here. Yeah, there we go. Just click on deploy and it's going to tell you the further process. So it's telling you to initialize your Git repository and push it to the repository, which basically, so I'm expecting that you are currently pushing your repository to the GitHub. If not, just go on and initialize your repository by typing git init and then push it to the GitHub by typing git add dot git commit and then git push origin master if you want to push it to GitHub. But in our case, we are going to push it to Heroku master. So let's go on and do that. So git add and git commit preparing for deployment and let's try to push it to Heroku. So git push Heroku master and there we go. It has started the process and you can see it's install. It's installing the binaries. It has ran this command successfully. I mean not successfully, but it's running it. So let's see if it works or not. If it doesn't work, I'm going to tell you the another way to do it. There we go. There is our command. So now as you can see over here, it's starting to build our folder in our front end. So it's creating an optimized production build. There we go. Our app has successfully deployed. Let's go in and check it out. Okay, we can see that this site has been deployed, but for some reason it's not starting up. Maybe because we haven't added our environment variables. Yep, there we go. It has started now, but it says an application error occurred. So what's happening over here is we haven't added our .env file. So all of the content inside of the .env file, we need to add it to our Heroku app. So let's go to Heroku and click on settings. And you can see over here, we have reveal config vars. And over here, we need to add our key value pairs of .env file. So let me go on and quickly do that. And there we go. We have added all four of our .env variables. So let's go on and quickly test this app out if it's working now or not. Go ahead and refresh. There we go. It's working absolutely fine. So let me quickly just go on and explain you what the second method was. So if this doesn't work for you, what is what you need to do is just go on to git ignore and just remove this slash frontend slash build and just push this build folder as well to your Heroku. So that way you don't need to build it on the runtime. You have already pushed the build folder to the Heroku, but since it works, then it's fine. That's great. So congratulations with this, we have successfully completed our Mern stack series. We have created this node zipper application from absolute scratch and deployed it to our Heroku server. So just give this video a huge thumbs up. And if you are not subscribed yet, just go to youtube.com slash roadside coder and click on this subscribe button real quick. It motivates me to make more such awesome videos. And also if you like to support me more, I have this buy me a coffee link. You can just go over here and buy me a coffee or you can just go on and take a membership where you get some awesome perks like learning web development from me one on one. So thank you all for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.